Hello friends, welcome back to our channel at Evergreen Yogis. If you have not been here before, my name is Karina. Hi, welcome. And if you have been here before, welcome back. Um, today we're going to be doing a flow and really getting into some stabilization, some ankle mobility, really challenging our lower half of our body and seeing what it's capable of today. So go ahead and grab a water. Um, you will likely not need any props, but if you typically use props in your practice, maybe some blocks, maybe use that as help, then go ahead and grab that if you need be. And if not, I will meet you on your mat. Starting off in a seated position, wherever you feel comfortable, if you wanna come into hero, if you wanna come into crisscross or maybe lotus, it is completely up to you, but we're just gonna sit for a moment becoming aware of our breath. Become aware of where it goes. Does it fill our belly first or our chest? Can we manipulate it to feel it go deeper into our belly, truly using our diaphragm On your next inhale, inhale the hands up to the sky. Big stretch through the body. Exhale, right hand comes down to our side, left hand comes over into a side bend. Rotating that chest up towards the sky. So that way that chest comes out and we are not slouching down into our mat. We're truly feeling our side bend all the way down our left side of our body. On our next inhale, both hands come up to the sky. Exhale, left hand to the mat, right hand comes over, big side bend over to that right side, twisting that body open towards that right corner of the room. Remembering to breathe here, big belly breaths in through our diaphragm, truly using that muscle to get the air all the way into our belly, even in the side bend. Inhale, hands up to the sky. Listening to your own breath, flowing through this side bend as your body feels that it can move. Exhaling over to one side. Inhaling back up through center. Exhaling over to the other side. Listening to your body and what it needs today. A couple more times through. On your next inhale, we'll meet in center and exhale those hands, cactus the arms open to either side. Inhale, hands up to the sky, cactus the arms. Again, listening to that breath and what it is capable of, what does it need? How does it flow through you? On your next exhale, allow the hands to come back to your knees for some seated cat cows. Feeling the chest open, opening the throat, engaging the core, belly to spine into that cat motion. Rounding that back, rounding that spine. Inhale, pulling that chest through, sending the energy forward and up. Listening to your body and what it needs, finding these small movements here. And when your body is ready, coming into our hero posture, facing the front of the mat, we're going to work into some ankle mobility here. Placing your hands on either side, or if you'd like to use blocks, in order to aid this, this will just help raise those feet up and give you a little more support in the core. Engaging the core with your feet untucked behind you. So we're truly sitting on our heels. And I'll do this first without the block so you're able to see all the way through my lower half. But putting our hands on either side, engaging our core, and we're gonna lift up our knees, stretching out the fronts of our feet and slowly lower them down. 
And if you use those blocks, that just creates more stability and you're able to use more of your arm strength rather than solely relying on the curving of the spine. Lifting up with the knees as you inhale and exhale, lower them back down. And this allows the front of the foot to truly open up, which we typically don't do in our daily lives. As you inhale and exhale, flowing through here. And on your next exhale, allow the knees to stay down. And we're going to tuck the toes, bringing the toes underneath, sitting the butt back onto the heels. And if this is too intense to stay in this stretch, you can just lean forward, hands on the mat, and this lowers that stretch just a little bit more. So we'll just sit here for a moment, stretching out the bottoms of our feet. As we sit here, we're gonna come into half cow face. Inhaling that right hand up to the sky, left hand behind the spine, clasping our hands behind our back. If we can't reach and touch our hands, then holding this posture, holding this position right here is perfectly okay. And on your next exhale, we will switch over to the other side. Left hand comes up, right hand comes behind the back. Again, if you can't touch fingers, that's totally cool. I can't touch on this side. Each side will look a little different. Tucking that rib cage in, ensuring that we're not bending out. And slowly release the hands. Bring your feet untucked and maybe you walk them out, shake them out, do some ankle rolls. Let those feet loose. Tuck the toes and we're gonna shift the weight back coming into our yogi squat. From here, we're gonna walk the hands and we're gonna do that motion over and over again. Walking the hands out, shifting over the ankle muscles, working into ankle stability here, becoming aware of all the little muscles in our ankle that helps us walk every day and keep our balance, strengthening those little muscles, coming back and forth from yogi squat into kind of like a modified tabletop. Working on this mobility, the stability, all the illities. Moving with your breath. Next time that you are in yogi squat, pause here. Widen your stance just a little bit, plant the hands slowly, engage through the core, engage through the quads, lifting the hips up into forward fold. And if this is your first forward fold of the day, maybe you walk it out, bending into each knee, into each leg, feeling the shift. And from here, go heel toe your, your feet into the wide edge of our mats. And then we're going to shift back down slowly as we can into our yogi squat. And we're gonna flow through that three times through. Inhaling, engaging through our lower half, allow the head to go long into our forward fold. And as we exhale, and we're not putting weight in our hands, we're using the engagement of our lower half of our body, the stability in our lower half of our body to lift us up and back down. You can use the hands as aids, but we're not using our muscles. We can use the hands as stability and balance, but we are truly engaging through our lower body in order to move through this motion. Coming back down into that yogi squat, walking the hands forward and out, lift the hips up high into down dog. Again, if this is your first down dog of the day, go ahead and walk it out. Feel what that motion is like, shifting into one hip and then the other. On 
On your next inhale, inhale right leg up to the sky, pulling it through, framing that right foot with your hands. Inhale, keeping that back heel up, engage the core, lifting up into our warrior one. Exhale, cactus the arms out, opening up through that chest. Allow the hands to come behind us, clasp those arms. Exhale into a humble warrior. Inhale, release the hands, coming up back into our warrior one. Exhale, hands back down to the mat. Right foot meets the left, vinyasa throw. Cobra or up dog, engage the core, lower half of our body is still engaged, lifting up off the mat. Exhale, down dog. Same thing on the other side. Inhale, left leg high, pulling it through. Frame that left foot. Inhale, warrior one. Exhale, cactus the arms all the way down. Clasp the hands behind the back. Exhale, warrior, humble warrior. Inhale, hands up to the sky, warrior one. Exhale, hands meet the mat. Left foot steps back back. <laughs> Vinyasa through, chaturanga down. Inhale into cobra or up dog. Exhale, down dog. Whoa, losing balance. And if you lose balance in any of these postures, that's totally okay because I almost just lost balance in downward dog. On your next inhale, right leg up to the sky. Stepping it through, as it comes through, we're gonna shimmy it over to where the right hand was. Drop that back knee, untuck the back toes, right hand up to the sky, gentle twist. Continuing to breathe here. Tuck the back toes, lift that back knee, engage the core, exactly the position that our upper body is in. We're gonna keep it in this twist. We're going to, on our next inhale, lifting it up into this twisted warrior. Breathing into it. Exhale, cartwheel his hands, left hand leads, opening up that back heel into warrior two. Take a breath here. Inhale, right hand up to the sky, exalted warrior. Inhale, warrior two. Exhale, hands to heart center in prayer. Shifting both toes to that left side of the mat, facing the left side of the mat. Engaging through our quads, engaging through our core, allowing us to sink over and to the left side, and then over to the right. Shifting our weight back and forth to the front of the mat, to the back of the mat. Keeping our core engaged. From our hips up, we wanna be as tall as we can. From our hips down, we wanna get low. The next time that we are over on the left side, holding it, and then walking that right foot in just a little bit in order to get down into Stanasana. Allowing those right toes to come up to the ceiling. If the left heel is on the ground, that is awesome. And if it is not, you are just like me. Using those hands for stability. Breathe into this posture, catch your breath. On your next inhale, drop that left knee, I'm gonna twist over so you can see me. Drop the left knee onto the mat. Left hand comes to the top of the mat, lifting up into this modified side plank. Breathing into it and hip comes down. Bringing both hands to the front of the mat or if you're on the back of the mat, do that. Twisting into to where you are framing the left foot. Just like where you started on the other side, 
drop that right knee, untuck the back toes, lifting up into this gentle twist on the left side. And here we will start that flow over again, facing this way. Breathing into this posture, tuck the back toes, lift that back knee, engaging the core, the same position that our body is in, our upper body is in right now. We are going to hold on to this, engaging that lower half of our body, sending energy through our legs, lifting up, engaging the core into this twisted warrior. Inhale, right arm leads, cartwheel the hands open. Allow that back heel to come to the mat, warrior two. Inhale, exalted warrior. Exhale, back into warrior two. Hands come to heart center, pointing those toes towards the side of your mat that you're facing and shifting your weight into each of your legs into this side lunge. Engaging the core, keeping that body up tall as much as we can. Lift that gaze to the upper side of the ceiling to aid in that. And next time you're over on the right side, hold on to it for three, for two, for one and lower that hip down, bring that left leg in just a little bit into this Sandasana. If you can hold this balance here, breathe into it, find your dristi, hold that focal gaze, feel the big stretch through that left hamstring. When you're ready, right hand meets the mat, Right knee comes down, working into that modified side plank. Bringing both hands back down to the mat. Right leg meets the left, flowing through our vinyasa, chaturanga down. Inhale, cobra or up dog. Exhale, pushing back into down dog. Gaining that breath back. Allow the knees to go wide as the mat, bringing them down. Hips come back onto the heels, child's pose. Breathe into that child's pose getting ready for our cool down. If you need a drink of water, please grab that. From our child's pose, walk the hands back, coming into hero posture, walking our heels out just a little bit to either side of our quad, working into stretching out those quads if this is already a big stretch in the quads, then you stay here. If you'd like to take it a little further, maybe you lean back or you come onto forearms or you walk it all the way down until your back is on the ground. But whatever is comfortable, there is no knee pain in our class. If you feel pain in your knees, don't go any further. Come up just a little bit. Breathe into this posture. Gaining control of that breath, becoming aware of what your body did or was capable of. Was there a side that it struggled more on? Was there a side that it was more strong? And just as slowly as we came into this posture, we will come out of it engaging our core, making sure that we are not relying on our lower back in order to pull us up. Slowly walking it forward into tabletop. 
from tabletop, lifting that right knee to right wrist, coming forward into pigeon. Walk that back leg out if you need be. If you want to work into the front of the left hip, we stay tall, working into it. Or if you'd want to work into the inner side of the right hip, you come, excuse me, forward onto either forearms or into full sleeping pigeon. And here you can grab a pillow, a blanket, use a block, whatever kind of props make this posture a little more relaxing and a little easier for you. And just notice what's happening in your body. Notice what this side feels like. Walk the hands back towards your hips. Engage the core, lifting that back leg up, right meets the left, and then left leg comes forward into left side pigeon. Maybe you find some movement. I suggest matching what you did on the other side. If you stayed tall, working into the front side of the right hip, you stay tall, you want to work into the deep side of the left hip, you come forward into forearms or sleeping pigeon. And maybe this side, even if you chose the same thing, it feels different. You can't go as deep or maybe you go deeper into your stretch. Continuing to send oxygen towards the pieces of your body that need love. Telling your mind, this is the part of my body that I need you to pay more attention to. Become aware of. And allow your weight to come over onto your left hip. Swing that right leg all the way around to the front of your mat and allow both legs to go long. Coming into a forward fold here and making sure that when we forward fold, we truly tilt our pelvis forward and we don't round through our lower back just reaching for our toes and hoping that we feel a stretch in our hamstrings. We want to bend into our knees in order to ensure that our hamstrings are actually lengthening out. And you don't have to touch your toes in order to be in a forward fold. So as my knees are bent, you can truly see that my pelvis is tilted forward, reaching forward through our chest, allowing our body to lead, coming into this forward fold. And we will truly feel a release in our lower half, in our hamstrings. Breathing into this posture. And slowly walk your hands back, engaging the core, allowing one vertebrae at a time to come down to the mat. Rolling that spine down, opening the chest into our final resting posture of Shavasana. Allow the feet to go wide, hands to open, and you to accept all the things that the universe offers you. You may stay in the Shavasana as long as your heart desires 
or you may be ready to come back to your day when you are rolling onto your favorite side and slowly pushing your way up. For those who are ending their practice with me, I appreciate you and thank you so much for coming and practicing with us today on the mat. Thank you for showing up and doing the hard work. We really appreciate you. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. That really helps us out. We appreciate you. Thank you. Oh, fuck. Was it not recording?